Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us this morning and for allowing us to come into your house. Uh, we're live right here at Rock City Church uh, uh, Sanctuary, and I'm blessed today to have one of our great church members here, one of the saints of God that uh, has been with us a long time now, and uh, she's going to give a little bit of her story. Her name is Darlene Marshall, and she runs, she's the manager of an assisted living facility, which is considered a hot spot with the coronavirus. Uh, good morning, Darlene. Glad morning. to have you with us. Thank you, Bishop, for having me. Let me give you some quick questions. Uh, first of all, what do you do in this process of running this thing? Tell me about this uh, uh, assisted living program. What does it entail? Gotcha. So I'm responsible for taking care of almost 90 residents and my staff of almost 75 people. And, um, and then, of course, their family, families, and I'm the executive director there. So our mission every day is to take care of people. So in that fact, uh, the, the, the thing that I would ask is, uh, how have you seen God working uh, during the coronavirus at your job? Gotcha. So as a result of the coronavirus, we've had to eliminate all vendors. And so I realized, Bishop, that I'm a minister. Yeah. And I can preach the gospel. Yes, you so can. So I don't have to have people to come in. And so I started Church at the Lighthouse. And that gave me a vehicle to minister to my residents every single week, twice a week, Thursdays and Sundays. And so we worship, I pray for them, I encourage them in the things of God. Well, you know, it's so important today that with people dealing with this pain of this event mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, we've seen so many people that started in Washington State that lost their life yeah. in these nursing facilities and these mm -hmm. assisted living. And uh, when you can come there with hope. I know they watched, many of them watched our program, Living Proof. Yes. And, uh, you know, when you're at the end of the journey, mm -hmm. it's probably the most important time you need to hear somebody tell you there's hope. Absolutely. You know, Darlene, also I'd like to ask, uh, how has the messages that you've been hearing that have been coming from the uh, word that you read in your Bible as well as the messages from the pulpit, uh, how are those helping you handle and do what you do in this crucial time? Awesome question. You know, in the season that we find ourselves where we have to walk around with a mask on our face, you know, one of the things you shared with us early this year was that this is the year of the mouth. And I just decided for myself that I am not going to allow myself to be muzzled by a mask. And that if God's got a word in me, I need to open my mouth and declare it. And so even at the lighthouse, even though we're in mask every single day in that place, all day, um, I, I take my mask off when I'm praying for my residents. I'm declaring God in, the, in that place. I talk about faith. I talk about the fact that we don't have to be fearful. Uh, Philippians 4, 6 tells us to be anxious for nothing. And that's what I say to my residents. That's what I say to my families. And that's what I say to my staff. Well, you know, I'm reminded that Jesus said something. He said, uh, Father, I have kept those that you gave me. Yeah. And I understand that nobody in your facility, how many people are in your facility? I have 80 resident, 85 residents right now. And no one's come? No one. And I have staff, 75 staff right now. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Isn't that a good report? Absolutely. Now, report. finish it up by telling me this. And tell the folks that are watching here, you're a... Uh, businesswoman, you're a mother, you're a wife, you're all those things, yeah. uh, how are you managing that in Christ? Very good question. Um, again, even for us as my family, my husband James and my, my daughter Jerry and my grandbaby, I'm a grandmother, um, honestly, we are not social distancing in our home because I'm married, we're one flesh, and so James and I pray together, we share the word together, we talk about it, we encourage one another. And just a quick story, he called me on Friday on my way to work, and he was like, I need to pray for you, because he was up here cutting the grass that day, and he prayed for me, and he prayed for the lighthouse, and we just share, and we believe, and we encourage one another in our faith. Hallelujah. Well, you know, I, I want to say this, uh, Darlene is representative of so many people that uh, have taken a position, you know, to stand in the midst of this uh, coronavirus uh, uh, situation and they uh, stand and they uh, write in their job uh, and they're a witness in their job. How important is that today that we can hear the word of the Lord, a woman, a businesswoman, a woman running a place that's referred to as a hot spot 
and that woman is standing and she's walking in her faith and she's being a witness for Christ. I got to tell you, saints, that's what the church, the ecclesia, is really all about. Is, is all about. Next, I'm going to introduce a, a, a young man uh, who's been with us for a long time here at Rock City Church. Uh, amongst all the things that he is, he's also an elder in our church. Uh, and uh, Mark Flickinger, he owns a business and uh, he manages that business as well, an architectural firm. And uh, so, Mark, good to have you with us. Thank you, Bishop. It's great to be here. And I, I think what we'll do is ask the same kind of questions, but uh, how has this crisis affected you and your business? Tell me that first. Well, it's obviously a very interesting time for all of us. Um, we, uh, within about a week or two weeks, we had to totally revamp how we do our work. Um, luckily, we are, you know, thankfully, we're considered an essential business, and so we're still able to function, but we had to make sure everybody could work from home and, and that took a lot to try to transition and make that happen. Well, that, that's the challenge is, is when, especially when you're dealing with people that are not all Christians yes. and you're trying to uh, walk that line to not overbearingly put Christ in front of them, but in that way that can bring their hearts to change, they need to see Christ in you. Exactly. And we have a group of people in our office, and again, we have about 70 people that work in our office. Wow. And there's a group of people that are believers, and they've uh, chosen to gather, and they gather through, through Zoom, similar to what we've been doing here at the church, and they pray every week on Wednesday. They get together and, and, and pray. Wow. And so that's been a great, you know, strength to, to our group. But then also we've had opportunities to share with those that are, you know, wondering what, what's going on, what are we going to do, and asking, you know, my wife Rosa and myself, you know, how, how are you guys handling this? And, and we're like, well, our strength isn't in ourselves. Our strength and is in God. And they're asking of the hope that lies within you. Yes. Now, what's the name of your company? Uh, it's BKM. Uh, we're an engineering company. Tell the folks there on the we camera. Desi we design uh, um, building systems. Uh, and so, actually, right now, we've been given an opportunity to design a couple uh, facilities for a local hospital in Washington, D.C. In, uh, in response to the coronavirus and also another facility up in Pennsylvania that they want to create some space to deal with the you know, ongoing problems. Uh, so would you say that even in the midst of this that your business is still functioning and, and calls are coming in? And it's, it's actually pretty vibrant. Uh, there's wow. still a lot of opportunities that have been out there and so uh, we're really you know thankful for that um, through this but um, you know, it's just been an a great opportunity. To well, let me ask you this, Mark. As a businessman in this area, um, I'm sure you're watching with great interest, as I am and a lot of people are, uh, how our government and how our local government, our governor, and those around will respond to this uh, coronavirus and the coming to the end at some point. How, how are you looking at that? What's your thought on that? Well, I mean, obviously, we're hoping for a time very soon that we could all come back together. Although we've been able to work, it's still uh, very, it's a, it's a strain on what we're doing and, and the people that we work for. Sure. Um, and so we're really looking for the opportunity for this, you know, to break and for there to be a healing here, here that we can all come back and get back to the normalcy that we were used to. Well, it sure is my prayer that we're going to pray for our governor that he hears right and he hears yeah how these things affect Maryland. It's good to join together with other uh, states, uh, but one of the things that is real important, I believe, Mark, is that uh, we need to hear for our state. Yes. What, what, does, what does Maryland need to do? And so as a businessman, I know you're praying and I know others are uh, about that thing. And let me just take you here. Uh, how, how, how are you as a businessman and a church member uh, two questions. Uh, how are you bringing the gospel to your own home? Mm -hmm. Well, it's been interesting. I've been reading in, in James, um, and actually it's interesting. The reason I started to do that because my, my parents were involved in a Bible study, and they said, I called them the other day, and they said, well, you're interrupting us. We're having a Bible study. We're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're studying James. And I'm like, I need to read the book of James. And, of course, you know, James talks about faith and faith without works. It's you know, dead. faith without works is dead. And so this is a critical time for us because, you know, when, when, when the tide comes in, I've shared this with you before, but when the tide's coming in, everybody is happy and, and glad. But when the tide goes out, you know, you, things are get exposed. 
And so we need to be able to be those that are in the midst to be able to share our faith. And so we had an opportunity recently, uh, last Sunday, to uh, invite a neighbor. We invited a neighbor over who is, who's, who's been alone. Um, his family is out of state, and they've been, um, you know, quarantined. So uh, we had an opportunity to share with him and brought him over and had dinner with him. But before dinner, we had, uh, we shared communion. Oh, that's awesome. And he was so grateful for the opportunity to share communion with each other. So he's a neighbor. He was just a neighbor. Um, and uh, uh, he goes to a local Catholic church, and he said, I, he, at the end, he said, I'm so grateful because I have not been able to take communion since this all began. Wow. And so that, you, you shared that with us, and we took that and, and, and applied that, but it really, um, it, it was a breakthrough. So. Well, you know, I, I say to our people here at Rock City Church, I encourage them, uh, take communion every day. My wife and I do, and, and uh, there are occasions, of course, we miss because we're busy or we forget or something, but we take communion every day. And it's so vitally important that we stop the, uh, the merry-go-round of life and take a minute and break bread and, and take that time. And, and lastly, Mark, uh, how is uh, this affecting you in your ability to give? Has it caused you to hold back or feel more liberty to give, more need? How do you approach giving? I know you teach it in the church. Yeah, um, and it's funny. One of the people, I was also on the prayer line on Thursday, and one of the people that called in, I said who I was, and he said, oh, I know, you're, you're the finance guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but we have had opportunities to, to give, obviously, um, and we've been, you know, um, able to continue to give um, because we have our resources not dropped off uh, through this. And then also... Uh, my wife and I were sharing the other day, we're like, I think we're spending less money because we're not out and about that's, doing things that's true. that we might normally do and spending that would gas be... Gas is cheaper. And, and well, <laughs> gas is cheaper and we're not driving anywhere either. So, so uh, you know, a lot of expenses have gone down um, through true. this process. So, um, And that wonderful saints, you know, uh, as Elder Mark has just shared as a businessman and family man and all of those things, how he's been able to bring Christ right in the midst of this crisis. And I think that's really what we need to say is uh, it's time for Christ to be in the crisis. And, uh, you know, God is a God who always shows up in uh, any time there's been chaos, you'll find God. In the beginning, creation tells us that uh, God showed up in the chaos of the moment God showed up. It says the earth was void and without shape, and God showed up. And you know, no matter what seems to be in chaos around us in the world, God is somewhere to be found. Uh, he's the honey in the carcass if we look for it. Well, I, I'm also blessed to have one of my kids with me uh, that uh, I've known her since she was a little girl, about two years old, and uh, I'm so blessed to have her here as a part of the uh, family at Rock City Church. She runs our children's department in our church as well as she runs our school. We have a school that we've had open from K, pre-K through uh, fifth grade. And uh, we've been in education for 38 years. And uh, we had a, a very large school at one time, uh, K through 12th grade. And uh, But we sized down. And I, I really want to say this to those that are listening. I encourage you uh, if, uh, if you're listening with, uh, from another church or, or even if you're a minister listening, it's time that the church go back to education. Christian education has somehow slipped out of our hands. If you read the Bible in America, Christian education, the church was the schoolhouse. And the Bible was the textbook. And we need to get back to teaching another generation uh, about the power of God and God's purposes in mankind. And he affects the sciences. He affects the history. History is his story. And uh, we need to get back to that educational uh, uh, system of training our young people up in the way they should go so that when they get old, they won't depart from it. Uh, and I wrote a book recently called uh, The 5G Shift, uh, and it's about five generations are on the earth, 
at all time, and they'll put it on the uh, screen and show you at some point today how you could order that book. Uh, it's a great book about how we can win uh, generation one and two and see a major revival come to America through those two generations alone. So I have with me, again, as I said, one of my daughters in the Lord, Julie Trout, and uh, she runs our school, and welcome, Julie. Glad to have you with Thank us. Thank you for having me, Bishop. And uh, she's a fire plug, and uh, she's always got something percolating, something going on. And uh, Julie, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. And when you talk, uh, make sure you uh, tell the folks in the audience. Uh, you, you run a school, a pre-K to fifth grade, and all of a sudden it's closed. What was it like, and what do you, did you do to keep the doors open? Great question. Um, it's important to hear God. And when we were sensing that this was happening, Bishop challenged us to start doing some videos and preparing our regular students so that they could start to learn at home should we have to close. So that's in place for our current students. But not only that, um, when one door closes, God opens another one. And we saw a need for all of these first responders that didn't have anywhere for their children to go and just really needed a safe, positive place. So we opened our doors up to be able to care for the children of uh, nurses, police officers, correctional officers. Oh, well, that's good. And so the school now is functioning, and you've been able to even bring some teachers back. We have. Because you're working now with uh, essential workers and first responders. Yes, sir. We've been able to bring them back, and we have a full day. So even when parents are working and a lot of families are at home doing digital learning, we have the day structured so that the children are able to still do their schoolwork, connect with their own teachers in their own schools, and then still be challenged here creatively, academically. We're doing science investigations with them, creative investigations and lessons, and they're having such a blast that at the end of the day they don't even want to go home. Well, now, with these first responders and essential workers, um, how important is that to them? It's absolutely important and essential for them to have peace of mind. They have so much on their mind already. Am I going to encounter someone? Am I going to bring this home? Yeah. Am I going to expose my family? And just knowing that their child is in a safe, clean place, knowing that their child's being cared for by loving believers, they don't even have to worry about that. And they've just been so grateful. And I understand that even uh, one or two of the, the, the parents have already commented that when it's time to go back to school as usual, uh, they're looking at bringing their child here because they've seen how their child responded to the environment that's here. We Ab know what that environment is. Yes, absolutely. Um, the parents have said they want their kids in our summer camp that we do here. And even in the school year, they want them to be a part here. They're so at peace and, and happy with even changes that they're seeing in their children. Some In other settings, I guess the children might have had some kind of issues or trauma behaviors, but here they're just seeing a totally new child full of joy and peace. Well, one of the things that I know we've talked about is what do we do after this? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, how do we prepare in case uh, this happens again? What do we do if we run into another a pandemic or something else, uh, how do we reach these kids? Because we've got to keep these kids uh, being educated. Uh, how, what are some of the thoughts we're looking at? Well, God's given us creative resources and talents and abilities. And one thing we're looking at is, you know, should we ever have to be in this predicament again where we can't meet physically, what can we do virtually to connect with people? That's so cool. even right now, our summer vacation Bible school that we planned, we already have it planned two ways. We can either do it in person or we could do it virtually. Oh, that's um, awesome. That's yeah. tremendous. You know, uh, we've got to be innovative in this time. We have to think outside of the box you hear all the time. And let me ask you this last question. Uh, how's it been working uh, and caring for other people's kids when you have five of your own little rug rats? <laughs> it's actually been a balance, and God's just been so good and gracious to just help with that and this is where your support structures come in place and the people that you have relationship with and you're in your li in, that are in your life. Um, it's been an opportunity to take advantage of the word where it says that even in, during the plague when the Israelites came out, they came out with plunder. And even that parable where um, the talents were left with three individuals and the one that did nothing with it didn't reap the benefit that the other two who had tried did. 
So we've been encouraging not just our own children and our family, but the children and the children's ministry, and especially the radicals, what would God do with them in this time? How could God use them in their purpose? And we've challenged them to learn a skill or to start a business or to see what problem they can solve during this time. Because it's not a time for them just to sit around. It's a time for them to gain and to come out better than they were when all this ends. Thank you, Bishop. Praise the Lord. You know, Julie, thank you so much for that. And uh, that's really what it's going to take. It's going to take the church uh, getting uh, creative and, and allowing. You know, we serve the creator. So we should become creative in our thinking of how we have church going forward. And I believe very strongly in the gathering of God's people. And I'm going to preach to you this morning a message that I believe is going to really have an effect in your life. And I hope you enjoyed those uh, few short testimonies. We're going to try to do that uh, uh, as we go along here in these seasons of uh, uh, being uh, sequestered, sequestered here in the church, kind of locked up, kind of kept from gathering. And as I said earlier with Elder Mark, uh, my prayer for Baltimore and for the state of Maryland is that uh, the governor and those uh, in power and authority would hear uh, that uh, the nation is saying and as well as uh, we are believing that it's uh, coming to the point where we need to be able to come back to work and begin to come back into our environments. And uh, I'm believing that we're going to see that happen. I uh, read where... A church uh, uh, in uh, Kansas, uh, uh, they uh, had allowed the, the door to open for certain things, uh, and uh, you know, and and yet they were not allowing the church to gather. And I think we need to be very careful and prayerful. And I encourage the saints of God to be in prayer, uh, not to be uh, any kind of uh, revolt or anything, just to keep it in prayer. See, God moves mountains through prayer. And uh, I, I, I'm a person that strongly believes in the power of prayer. And so uh, I know that God will open these doors for us so we can all come back together. I believe in the gathering of God's people. And the scripture bears it out. And I thank God for the day we're going to be able to come back into the house of the Lord and uh, be able to worship together and, and have uh, a time to hear God together. Thank you for watching Rock City Church Online. We pray this message strengthens and encourages you to be all God has called you to be. You can support Rock City Church by giving online through the links in the description or by visiting our giving page at giver.cc. Join us for our next live stream on Thursdays at 7 p.m. and Sundays at 1030 a.m. And remember, our prayer room and prayer line are always available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For prayer, call our 24-hour prayer line at 410-882-2689.